My guest today is Shahed Jodri. Shahed, how are you doing? Good. How are you, David? I'm doing great. I love your new haircut, by the way. All right. Thank you. Just got it done today. <laughs> yeah. Not uh, my cup of tea, but uh, I, I didn't have much of a choice once uh, the damage had been done. <laughs> you, can't, you can't unfry an egg. <laughs> yes. But, you know, the difference between a good haircut and a bad haircut is about eight days. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Azure Arc. You were telling me about Azure Arc, and I was intrigued because not only am I unfamiliar with it, but I had literally never heard of it before you brought it up to me. What yes. is it? So Azure Arc, it's fairly new. Um, it was revealed as a preview a while back. Uh, it is fully available on Microsoft Azure. And mm -hmm. the way I like to explain it is to use the universal remote control analogy. Uh, I'm sure uh, if you're watching this video, you have multiple devices at home, uh, your TV, things that are attached to your TV. And mm -hmm. each of those devices may or may not have their own remotes. And you may have a universal remote control that controls all of them. So the universal remote helps you interact with all of these different devices. It doesn't necessarily replace all those other remotes, but for the most part, you can do a lot of things with that universal remote. And that's where Azure Arc comes into play. So imagine you have some server, sort of hybrid environment where you have massive data centers. Maybe you have a single server sitting underneath your desk. Maybe you're a multi-cloud. In addition to Azure, you also have Google Cloud and Amazon AWS services. And you would like to view a lot of these servers through a single pane of glass, as it's called. Azure Arc enables you to do that. Oh, interesting. So um, this is something that uh, I can manage devices and services that are not only on Azure, but in other clouds as well? That's correct. Uh, and if you're wondering, well, what's the catch? How, how am I supposed to authenticate all these other machines? <laughs> uh, so there, the, there's a limited number of uh, things that you can uh, currently access through Azure. So uh, the documentation currently states that you can do both Windows and Linux servers. And for database services, uh, you can do uh, databases like SQL and also PostgreSQL. And uh, obviously, if you have a full server, you can have any database on it. And Kubernetes clusters, where Kubernetes has been very popular uh, for running containers in, uh, you can have Kubernetes clusters running in any environment, again, any cloud, any data center, which can then hook up uh, to Azure Arc. And the way the hookup is done is not from the portal down, but rather you would go to the portal to set up your what's called a resource group. It's sort of a logical container of your Azure resources. And once you set up the resource group, you can add some additional metadata as to what you would like to attach to that Azure Arc. Uh, and once you do that, you'll be prompted to download some sort of script that you'd have to then run on your own uh, instance. So let's say if you have a Windows server running on Google Cloud, uh, you would then go to that Windows server and run the script, and it would enable the Azure Arc agent, uh, sure. which op opens sort of a gateway to back up to Azure. So later on when you go to Azure, uh, you can uh, take a look at how the server is doing. Uh, you can send updates uh, to that server. Uh, let's say if you have some database running on your data center, um, maybe some PostgreSQL that needed to be scaled up, you would be able to uh, enable that through Azure Arc as well. Uh, if you needed to use Azure policy to enforce certain policies for your organization, maybe uh, you have a lot of governance requirements, uh, you can do that through Azure Arc as well. Oh, so if I... Um... Uh, if once I set these scripts up on Google Cloud or AWS, then I really never have to go back to the to their portal or their interface anymore. I can manage everything from within Azure. Yes. So again, it depends on what kind of authentication you're using. So as you're running the scripts, uh, you can uh, obviously use the Azure CLI to log in as yourself, or you can also set it up with an Azure Service Principle, which is uh, a more secure way, uh, usually a cleaner way of doing things, depending on you know uh, what your needs are. So that way you don't have to use a specific uh, person's login. A service principle will allow you to authenticate. And then uh, whoever administered that account uh, may have to update it based on uh, if, if there are any changes to that account or not. But other than that, it's usually set it and forget it. It sounds like it's, it's mostly designed for infrastructure as a service. So you, have, you mentioned the servers, which are going to be virtual machines, and Kubernetes clusters, which are containers. And other than that, the only services are a couple of databases, SQL Server and Postgres. That's um, correct. 
So, so if you want, if you wanted to run a web server, I'm sorry, containers. go ahead. If you wanted more services, you would install them directly onto those VMs or containers. It, it wouldn't be good, for example, if I had an Amazon S3 storage or I had uh, um, Azure's uh, cognitive services, some of the PaaS offerings, things like that. Those are outside of the scope of this. Right. So for those, you would go to the portal of that particular cloud service. And let's say if you did want to run a web server and, and you're wondering, well, how can I use Azure Arc for this? So on your web server, let's say if you have a, a full server and you want to install the web extensions on it, uh, there's something called extensions where you can push down those extensions from Azure Arc as well to update a server. Uh, so again, uh, extensions don't do everything, but it does include web servers as well. Uh, is this going to evolve or they have, is there a roadmap for more features that will be added? Uh, so I would point you to docs.microsoft.com, and I'm assuming that you will add that uh, to the description section of your video later uh, to uh, to jo go check out the official uh, okay. Azure Arc documentation. But also, uh, I would suggest searching for uh, Azure Arc Jumpstart. So we pr uh, provide a bunch of scenarios uh, that are continually growing. It's on GitHub as well. And uh, if you take a look at that GitHub and also the documentation, uh, that's the best place to look for feature announcements and feature additions. I'm actually at the uh, docs.microsoft.com page now, uh, but I'm on the overview page. It's kind of getting an idea of how it works. And there are other, <laughs> there are a bunch of other links in here as well. Yeah. Uh, and there's also another thing, uh, and I, I do like to point out that uh, you, you know you don't have to start at docs.microsoft.com if you go to your favorite search engine, whatever that may be, and type in the thing you're searching for. Uh, typically, uh, all of our uh, docs uh, show up in both Bing and Google search results. So if you search for, for example, Azure Architecture Center, you'll find a bunch of architectures uh, design that Microsoft has worked through and has been updating on the architecture website. And there are some architecture uh, guidelines and uh, documentation diagrams uh, based on hybrid multi-cloud uh, using Kubernetes clusters. And that's something that would be very useful for some of the jumpstart scenarios in getting Azure Arc set up. I think that's the key. This is really designed for people that are building applications that span multiple clouds. If you were just exactly. using AWS, of course you do everything within AWS. And if you were yes. just using Azure, you wouldn't really need this. This is for um, uh, uh, multiple clouds, either because I don't know you're you're tying together services that already exist, or maybe you want that kind of failover capability in case Godzilla steps on all the Azure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could you could do it, but again, uh, you know that's actually a great point because I will use that same uh, remote control analogy again. So let's say you purchase a television, right, and yeah. all you have is the TV in your living room, and so you don't have any other devices, right? Remote, universal remote. <laughs> yes, you could totally use a universal remote, and all you would control is the same TV, which already has its own remote control as well. Uh, <laughs> so I think, uh, yeah, you you pointed put the nail right on the head. Uh, if uh, you don't have all these other hybrid or multi-cloud scenarios, uh, it's really no point in using it. This is definitely for enabling folks who have all these different uh, uh, services to be able to wrangle those together. Are you using this in production today? Uh, I am not currently using it, but we do have customers at Microsoft using it uh, who I will not mention by name today. Uh, so uh, it is active right now and it is available and is uh, very exciting for those who are uh, able to uh, harness that power uh, for multi-cloud. Tell me a little bit about, about the cost of the service. Uh, yes, so the cost of the services uh, is not something I know off the top of my head. Uh, I always refer to the pricing calculator. So again, great question. Uh, I never answer the question directly. Uh, what I do is say go to AKMS slash pricing, and for that uh, you will be able to see pricing for just the different services you have. And since uh, your resources still exist in the current uh, in whatever research, uh, servers they're on, whatever services they're in, uh, you will still incur costs for those uh, environments in those particular areas. There's, I'm assuming there's a cost on top of that to uh, manage them through Azure Arc. Um, yes, so I, I don't know that off the top of my head, uh, but I think by the time uh, we publish this video, uh, what I could do is gather that information and uh, hopefully you can include that in your description section as well, uh, maybe through a link. Yeah, I'm looking at something right now. I'll just say one Kubernetes configuration to see if it actually changes anything here. And it looks like if I just add one, it's zero dollars still. There must be some. Right, there you go. So that, <laughs> yeah, that's so that's a oh, good uh, that's a good test. find. Yeah. So there's a toggle button here between dev test and uh, non-dev test. 
Um, so because when you think about things like metadata that you're setting up, right? Uh, uh, just creating research groups and metadata itself doesn't incur costs. But when you add things like logging, uh, and let's say you want to add application insights, Azure Monitor, and logging, depending on how much space you're using, uh, how much, how many resources you're using there, uh, I'm not sure about that particular cost. So that might grow, uh, or it might be something that's covered uh, by wherever you're hosting that service. Yeah, I see. I was able to get some dollars show up. Six cores for 200 hours with the license included is $132 a month. This is an estimate, of course, and this is as of today. So if somebody watches this video a year from now. Check, check out the pricing pitch. I always say. And, and one thing, since David, you and I both work in Microsoft, <laughs> uh, I, I would say I'm definitely very spoiled by having uh, an internal Microsoft subscription to do all my play, uh, playground work in. So we don't uh, when we're, when we're right, working. right. Uh, but I do have, you know, my personal stuff as well, where I'm learning things on my own. Maybe I have a side project uh, for which uh, I'm able to use uh, Dev Essentials, which uh, is open to everyone. So Visual Studio Dev Essentials does include some Azure credits as well. So I would encourage anyone watching this video, uh, if you don't work at Microsoft, to also check out uh, Visual Studio Dev Essentials. Um, where's the best place to get started if you want to learn this or implement it? Uh, so I would say the Azure Arc Jumpstart. So that's part of Docs, and it shows uh, multiple areas to be able to start, and uh, it's also backed by uh, all the content on GitHub as well. Is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? Uh, yeah, so in addition to the Azure CLI that I'd mentioned earlier, uh, we also expose a REST API, and obviously the Azure portal itself uh, is a great place to you know point and click around to interact with Azure Arc. Uh, I see. So you can do it through the portal, or you can script it, or uh, you know if you're really hardcore, you can actually call those REST services directly. Yes. Yep. Well, excellent, Shahid. Thank you so much. This is I've learned a lot today. It's been very right. informative for me. So have I. <laughs>